Thanks to Dr. Bruce Perry, educators are able to help at-risk populations to reach their full potential in the classroom. Before intervention can happen to promote a positive learning experience for these students, a teacher should understand the basics on brain development. Neurodevelopment is rarely, if ever, taught to new and experienced teachers. Perry said that not enough parents, teachers, therapists, judges, or even physicians know enough about child development or the basics of brain organization. Having awareness can improve practices, programs, and schools for at-risk populations. So let's think about our own places of practice or your classroom. What are some of your students like in your room? Are some disruptive, constantly moving, showing signs of ADHD, overly emotional or dramatic? These students could be considered at risk and are likely to have experienced some type of trauma in the past. Educators have the potential to positively impact not only the learning experiences of at-risk students, but also their well-being. Well, there is good news. There are interventions that you can use in your own classroom to help. Let's go over the basics. Before using interventions, you must understand the four most important sections of the brain and how each develops. The brain develops from the bottom up and inside out, and each part is interconnected and relies on each other. The first to develop is the brainstem, located at the bottom. You can think of the brainstem as the core of the brain. The brainstem is responsible for the most primitive functions of the body, such as regulating body temperature, breathing, blood pressure, and heart rate. Reflexive thinking also occurs here. Since this part of the brain regulates the most basic functions, it is crucial that it's taken care of throughout pregnancy and during infancy. Have you ever thought of this? A child can experience trauma even before they are ever born. For example, a pregnant woman abusing substances throughout her pregnancy is already putting her child at risk for trauma. Following the brainstem is the midbrain. This section is seated on top and is slightly wider than its cohort below. The midbrain is special because it is reactive but does not feel. Fine motor skills, appetite, and sleep are regulated here. In order for the body to move, the midbrain sends signals. For example, blinking is controlled by communication from the midbrain. Negative experiences that affect the brainstem will also have a natural effect on the midbrain, as they are connected and rely on each other. The third section of the brain makes development a little bit more interesting. Above the brainstem and the midbrain sits the limbic system. The limbic system is considered to be the trigger for impulse and emotions. Affiliation, attachment, sexual behaviors, and emotional reactivity happen here. The feeling of love occurs in the limbic system. In at-risk youth, the idea of love may be skewed due to trauma in the past, depending on the situation. The final section of the brain is called the cortex. Above all others, the cortex sits on the top of the brain, rolling over the brainstem, midbrain, and the limbic system, and is the widest section. Abstract and concrete thought processes are created here, as well as logic and judgment. Remember, too, that each section of the brain is interconnected. The younger the child during trauma, the greater the impact it has on their life and each part of the developing brain. If a child has overstimulated brain stem, the cortex will feel the negative effects. Now that we have a brief overview of each section, let's relate this to teachers. Why should educators care about brain development? Trauma not only impacts development, but also behavior. Children who experience trauma can become dissociative, hypervigilant, unable to regulate emotions, and will not have the ability to calm and focus enough to learn in the classroom. Also, a child who experiences chronic, complex trauma has a greater density in the lower parts of the brain, the brainstem and the midbrain. Since learning and complex thought processes occur in the upper sections of the brain, learning will naturally be more difficult. Before you choose brain-based strategies to use with your own students, an educator has to know that the brainstem and the midbrain must be stimulated before higher order thinking can happen in the classroom. If interested in brain mapping and the neurosequential model of therapeutics, please visit the work of Dr. Bruce Perry and his team at www.childtrauma.org.